What's going on? Good morning and God bless you. Welcome back to the Morning Diva with your brother Sam Lopez, a.k.a. DJ Sam Rock. Sellout Radio Network is the network that I I own and I run. Amen. Oh, glory to God. And so when is with Azita RG is the online ministry um, that's been in operation since 2008, 7 and 8 around there. Amen. And we're still here. So God has definitely given us the grace to keep on going. Amen. Me and my wife, Uni Lopez. So listen, I'm here again for another morning Devo. Amen. And the reason why I'm here again is because God, the Lord, he had mercy on me. And I woke up this morning, and I'm like, wow, the mercy and grace of God is amazing. But do I really deserve his mercy? I don't think so. I don't think I deserve his mercy, and I dare to say that you don't deserve his mercy. Because if we did deserve it, amen, then we would have to do something to deserve it. And last time I checked, I couldn't do anything to deserve God's grace, God's mercy, God's salvation, Amen. If it was about what I did and about what I'm doing in life to deserve the mercy of God, um, then it would be works based instead of faith based. Amen. And if I could do enough, how much is enough to gain God's mercy over my life? How much is enough for you to gain God's mercy over your life? That's a good question, right? So today I woke up and I was like, listen, amen. <clears throat> I don't think it's from the Lord. Amen. I think of these morning devos are from the Lord because. I am definitely not a morning person. But listen, he goes, you don't deserve mercy from God. Why? Why don't I deserve mercy from God, Sam? Amen. And we're going to see in Ephesians chapter 2, verses 3 and 5, what that's all about. Amen. Is it debatable? Um, You could debate me, but I don't think we could debate the word. Amen. Uh, The word says what the word says. But we're going to see if we do deserve mercy. The mercy of God. And you've heard it all the time, right? Lord, have mercy on me. Some people take it further. Some people say, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Amen. All my life I grew up hearing people saying, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Amen. It's a good thing. It's a powerful thing. Amen. It's uh, an amazing thing um, to, for, for us to have the mercy of God. Amen. Upon our lives. So, Mercy is kind of one of those things that is a little difficult to understand sometimes because you're like, if God's a merciful God, why would he allow this and that and a third to happen to me, to happen to my family, to happen in the world, to happen um, what would happen in, Bu- in Buffalo um, a couple of days ago? If God's a God of mercy, why would he allow that for innocent people, right, um, to die such a tragic way? So it's hard for us to wrap our head around it, but we're going to try if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or any prayer requests, listen, never hesitate to do that. It's not a question. There's not a comment. There's not a concern. That's not valued by God, first and foremost, and by me. Amen. And prayer requests, you got the right man. I'm a prayer warrior. I'll pray all day, every day. Amen. For all your requests. Amen. Uh, whether or not they're genuine or not, because I know in the past people have <clears throat> asked for prayers for things that they weren't really, that really weren't real. But I prayed anyway, and God will deal with those people. Amen. Um, it was a little sad. A couple of people have played some tricks on me uh, early in ministry. They called in. I used to have a call-in show, and they would call in with some you know, fake um, stuff, fake requests, fake, fake everything, and then laugh about it at the end as if it was a joke. And to me, it's so serious. It's serious like cancer. Life is in the power of the tongue. Death is in the power of the tongue. Amen. And eternity is in, a, is in the balance. Where would you spend eternity? After death, what happens? The Bible says what happens. People are skeptical of what the Bible says what happens. People accuse us Christians of putting it in, fitting something in because nobody knows what happens after death. So you Christians put it in. You put it in your belief system. You put it in your Bible. Um, nonsense. I wasn't around when the Bible was invented, when it was written. The Bible, the Bible says that the word of God is inspired, amen, by him, amen. And I wasn't there to inspire anything. I'm inspired now by what the word says. That's why I know you can test the word of God for yourself. Don't be afraid. Don't act like, um, you know, that I'm the only one thinking this way. There's millions and millions upon millions of people who are alive now, who went to be with the Lord, who believed what we're saying now, and I believe it now. 
Why? Because I tested it. So do we deserve the mercy of God? And if we do, why? And if we don't, why? Amen. That's a good question, right? So let me have some good mornings up here. Good morning, Sister Mayor. So it's good to see you on the morning, Devo. God bless you. Amen. Amen. And we have an amen already um, from somebody on the group. So you don't deserve mercy. We're going to be looking at Ephesians chapter three, two. Ephesians chapter two, verses three and five. Amen. And I'm going to take a moment to pray. If you have any prayer requests, comments, concerns, um, don't hesitate to leave it right now. Even if I'm not live and you're watching this as a replay and you're listening to this as a replay, it's all good. Amen. And you can still, um, you know, put your comment, concern, prayer request, or anything like that. Amen. My brother, Anthony Pickens. God bless you, my bro. God bless you. Good morning. It's good to see you on the morning, Devo. Amen. And let's pray. And what we'll do is after we pray, we'll take a minute, 60 seconds. That internet, 60 seconds, right? It's a little different. It hits different, right? It's so fast. And we're going to share this out with as many people as we can. I'm going to get my phone ready. I'm going to start sharing, right? So, Father, I thank you for your grace and your mercy upon our lives. Even though, Father God, I, I believe we don't deserve your mercy, Lord Jesus. And if I'm wrong, Lord God, you will correct me. I will take the correction if we really deserve your mercy and your grace. But Father God, I thank you for your mercy. I thank you for your grace upon me and my family and upon every single person that's listening and watching right now, them and their families. I pray a hedge of protection in the powerful name of Jesus over everywhere they go. Everything that they do, everything that they see, everything that they hear and everything that they speak will be glorifying to you and Lord, Lord and your kingdom. I pray, Lord God, Arquin Angels, Minister Angels, forth right now in the name of Jesus to be on the assignment that you have assigned them to be on on and every single family member and every single person represented right now at the sound of my voice. I pray, Lord God, that you would show us where is your mercy and that you're proven to be the same God in the old covenant and the same God in the new covenant. You are the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And I thank you, Lord God, for your powerful word that you're going to share with us today on this morning, Devo. I pray by faith that everyone will have, have eyes, to eat, eyes to see, ears to listen, and mouths to speak and repeat your word as the most powerful word that we could ever repeat. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray this by faith with expectation of you doing something great today in Jesus' name. And the saints and everyone said amen and amen. So we're going to take, we're going to take 60 seconds. When we come back, we're going to hit Ephesians chapter 2, verses 3 and 5. But before that, before we hit Ephesians chapter 2, 3 and 5, I want to prove a quick point for people who think that there's a different God in the Old Covenant than the God that's in the New Covenant. People actually think that the Old Testament God is different from the New Testament God. So I'm going to give you a bonus scripture, amen, when we come back uh, to prove the point that that's not true. God is the same God in the Old Covenant and in the New Covenant. I'll be right back. Man, what did I tell you? See how fast the 60 seconds go? But amen, we're here. Thank you for sharing. For those who share this out, if you know somebody right now that's, that's, that does not have social media and you want them to get in on this, this is streaming live right now at YouTube too, on YouTube. All you got to do is go to DJ Sandrock. That's the name of my YouTube channel. I try to make everything very simple. Or you can send them over to this website right here. Live that someone is with a Z dot O R G. Live that someone is with a Z dot O R G. It's a platform that they can hop on right now and watch the live and get involved with what's happening at Soul Winners. Amen. So let me prove a quick point because I know a lot of people say 
that the Old Testament God and the New Testament God are two different because people say, wow, the God of the Old Testament, man, he was full of wrath, you know, very little mercy. He was just wiping people out, sending angels to wipe nations out and all that. And I used to think the same thing because when you read the Old Testament, you'd be like, man, it's a lot of drama, a lot of killing, a lot of a lot of murdering, um, a lot of um, angelic things going on and spiritual warfare, you know, all kind of stuff was going on. Why? Because it didn't take us long as human beings, as mankind, to mess things up. It took only three chapters in Genesis, from the very beginning, right? The book of beginnings, for us to mess it up in chapter three. Chapter one, beautiful. Chapter two, beautiful. And then chapter three, and then we find a way to disobey God. It didn't take long, right? So God saw the heart of mankind, amen, and he had to deal. God's not only a holy God, God's not only a merciful God, a graceful God, he's also a just God. He's a God of justice. So it just justice deserves punishment for a wrongdoing, right? Or else he wouldn't be a just God. Imagine if you heard that Hitler, um, all the stuff that he did, even though people deny what he did, I don't know how, but people deny what he did. And imagine God saying, oh, that's cool. He's forgiven, no problem, without justice. That wouldn't be a just God, right? That wouldn't be cool. That wouldn't be right. And God doesn't have to be right with us, amen? He doesn't have to be fair, amen? He doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't have to respond to us or anything, but he has. He's chosen to do that. Anyway, I don't want to start preaching. Hosea, the prophet Hosea, chapter 11, verses 8 and 9. Now, this is personal between God and his people, his people. Amen. Take it for what it is. But he's talking about his people, Israel. Listen to this. In Old Testament, this is the same God in the Old Testament that we're going to read about in the New Testament. And this is just one of the scriptures. There's many scriptures you could find about in the Old Testament about God's mercy and grace upon his people. But this one says, oh, how can I give you up, Israel? It's a question. God is asking the question, oh, how can I give you up? How can I let you go? Right? How can I destroy you like Adma or demolish you like Zeboim? Zeboim. Listen, I don't know where those places are. You'd have to do a study on it if you want to know where those places are. My heart is torn within me and my compassion overflows. Compassion? Compassion in God in the Old Testament? Are you kidding me? Yes. It's right here. No, I will not unleash my fierce anger. I will not completely destroy Israel, for I am God and not a mere mortal. I am the Holy One living among you, and I will not come to destroy. So does that look like a God of wrath when he's saying that he's not going to put the wrath of God on his people? Does that look like a a God who doesn't have mercy? Does that look like a God who doesn't have grace? It looks like God thought um, things thing through. He th- his thoughts on his people were merciful. You know? So how would you define mercy according to this scripture in the Old Testament? I would define it as God holding back what we deserve or what the people of Israel deserve. That's how I would define God's mercy. Is God holding back the wrath that these people deserve. Because for whatever reason, his people, amen, Just like when Jesus showed up on the scene, his people rejected him. His very own rejected the Lord. Same thing was going on in the Old Covenant. God was the God of heaven and earth. He still is the God of heaven and earth. The Father, Elohim, Yahweh, amen. And they were still looking at other nations with their idols and their gods. And they wanted that instead of, they wanted a king instead of God being the king over their land just the nature of man, the sinful nature of mankind. So this in Hosea chapter 11, read it for yourself. If you think I'm making this up, Hosea chapter 11, so you could prove to yourself and get the revelation that God is a merciful God since the very beginning. He had mercy even on Adam and Eve. Amen. Why? Because for disobeying God, he could have destroyed them. He could have destroyed Adam and Eve. But what did he do? He just kicked them out of the garden and said, you just messed things up. You took a perfect place, and now you mess, messed it up. So I have to kick you out. He let them live, though. Isn't that mercy? Amen? They deserve what? Death. They deserve the wrath of God. He just excused them and put them out of the garden. How many times has God just excused me 
and put me out of his garden instead of crushing me and killing me and demolishing me. God's a God of mercy. Amen. So I just wanted to show you that real quick. So that way, you know um, that we're talking about the same God of the Old Testament. And now we're talking about the same God in the New Testament. So Ephesians chapter two, verses three to five. Let's read it. Bible says all of us, and when God says all, he means it, A-L-L, all. You could, you know, do a translation in Hebrew, Greek, English, Latin, all means all, everyone. All of us used to live that way, whatever way um, that you know that's messed up, vile, foul, um, perverted, all of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. All of us. You could be the Pope. You could be the pastor. You could be the apostle. You could be an evangelist. You could be a prophet. You could be a teacher. All of us. You could be a bishop, right? All of us used to live that way. All of us. It's amazing when you ask somebody, you know, how long you've been saved? And somebody will be like, all my life. you be like, Really? How could you be saved all your life when the Bible clearly says that when we were born here, we were born bent to hell. I'm paraphrasing. We were born in our, we were born in iniquity and sin. Amen. We came into a sinful world. So are you born at birth? Are you born again at birth? I don't think so. But I understand what people say. They say they say that because they feel like because they grew up in a church, they were already saved. Praise the Lord if they're saved now. But I guarantee when we were born, we weren't saved. By our very own nature, we were subject to God's anger. It says it right here in the scripture. I'm not making this up. By our very nature, we were subject to God's anger. Innocent babies, subject to God's anger. We came here subject to God's anger. Just like everyone else, right? No one gets a pass on this. No one gets a pass on this. But God, how many people know when there's a but God? Um, God's about to change some things, right? He's about to renew some things, about to reestablish some things, about to do something. But God is so rich in mercy. Lord, have mercy. You heard your parents say that. You heard your grandparents say that. Sometimes I say it. Lord, have mercy. But God is so rich in mercy (coughs) and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life. When he raised Christ from the dead, it is only by God's grace that you have been saved. And I say this, and I, I learned this from Rabbi Zacharias when he was alive. He said this a lot. He said, people think that God, Jesus, came on a rescue mission, on a rescue mission to make good people better people, or to make bad people good people. And that's not correct. We see that even though we were dead because of our sins... God came to give us life. So Jesus, he didn't come to make good people better people or bad people good people. He came to give dead people life. And who were the dead people? The people that were without his spirit, the people that were under his wrath, and the people that didn't receive his mercy yet. The same God in the Old Testament, the book of Hosea, we read it. Check him out. And the God in the New Testament is the same God. Different Right manifestation of him, like God in the old covenant. Right, he came in the form of a cloud, fire at night, cloud during the day. Came through his word. He spoke through his prophets. Right, he even spoke through animals when necessary. Amen. He spoke through nature. He spoke through um, miracles, divine things happening. Spoke through war. Spoke through his angels. He spoke that way. Jesus shows up. Revelation of. The man of God, the God of man in the flesh. Perfect reflection of an invisible God. Even so today, you think about it. God is showing us mercy. He's showing mercy to Ukrainians and the Russians. He's showing mercy to the to the Taiwanese people and the Chinese people. He's showing mercy to the worst of us. He's showing mercy. If you're alive right now and you're a hardcore criminal, um, you've done things that... We don't want to discuss right now. And you're still alive right now. That's the mercy of God. That's not the wrath of God. It's the mercy of God. Think about it clearly. I'm trying to drill this point in. A lot of people think that we need to be afraid of the consequences of our sin. 
Should we be afraid? Should I be afraid of the consequences of my sin? I don't think so. Not on this side. I'm not being saved because the consequences of my sin were not eradicated or not dealt with by me. The consequences of my sin were dealt with Jesus on the cross. And he overcame and he overcomes your sin and my sin through what he has already done once and for all, for all the world. You know what I'm going to do now. I'm going to go to the same scripture. <clears throat> I want to read it out of the Amplified, Amplified Bible. Amplified Bible, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 3 to 5. Among these unbelievers, we all once lived in the passions of our flesh, our behavior governed by our sinful self. Can't blame God for a lot of the sin or any of the sin in our lives pretty much. It's our behavior, <clears throat> our sinful nature that we're fighting the most against. I fight more against my sinful nature than I do against the devil and demons. That's just me. You could have a different idea about that, but that's just me. <clears throat> Indulging the desires of human nature without the Holy Spirit and the impulses of the sinful mind. We were past tense. If you're saved, don't call yourself a sinner no more. That's a little ridiculous. You were a sinner. Now you're born again. You're a saint that has to wrestle with sin, the sinful nature, but you are not the sin. You have the control now over that sin. Now that you're born again, you have the power to look at those sinful things that used to overcome you quickly, rapidly. It looks like you had no ch chance before you were saved. You couldn't say no to sin. But now that you're born again, you have the same spirit that rose Jesus from the dead. The same spirit is in him. That is in me. That is in you. That's an amazing thing. That's why I had to think about it. So no longer am I a slave to sin, but I'm free from sin. Not only am I um, no longer am I bound to the law, but I'm free from the law. Amen. Because of what Jesus has done. If if we were bound to the law, we have Jesus. Holy Spirit living inside of us, then it's a contradiction in the scriptures. How could I have freedom living inside of me and be bound to the Lord at the same time? I'll leave that alone. And the impulses of the sinful mind. We were, by nature, children under the sentence. We were locked up. We were messed up. We were dead in the spirit of God's wrath, just like the rest of mankind. Amen? No one gets a pass. I'm telling you, no one gets a pass on this. I don't know why people think they sliding by as if they, they ain't going to go through this. Verse number four, but God, being so very rich in mercy because of his great and wonderful love with which he loved us, even when we were spiritually dead and separated from him because of our sins. Sin is the separator. One way the elevator down to the fire pit, eternal exterminator. That's what sin is. The only thing that separates us from the holy God is sin. And I'm not saying that God can't overcome the sin in my life and overcome sin in your life. He dealt with it already. So for us to sin saved is telling God, listen, your work on the cross wasn't enough. So now we have to repent. We have to turn from those ideas and <clears throat> Let's act like we're free because we are free. Who the Son sets free is what? Free indeed. Everywhere I go, I could bring freedom. Everywhere I go, I could bring peace. Everywhere you go, you could bring freedom. Everywhere you go, you could bring peace. Because we have the power of God. We have peace, the peace of God, because we have peace with God through what Jesus did. That's only if you're a believer, though. If you're not a believer, you're still under the wrath of God. That should scare you. If you're under the wrath of God because you feel like, ah, you know, I'm into this and I'm into that. Man, Jesus is just a man. He's just a prophet. And you have that type of attitude without allowing God to prove himself in your life. Then you're under the wrath of God. I was under the wrath of God before I got saved. Everybody who was not saved and saved now, we were all, past tense, we were under the wrath of God. Not no more. Now we're living in freedom. Amen. A lot of people won't understand the way we run now, the way we walk now, the way we speak now, the way we um, act now. They won't understand it because they don't have it. They don't have the Spirit of God 
giving them the understanding of the scriptures, giving them the understanding of how believers roll. They're under the sinful nature. Amen. And I don't think I could lose my salvation, but uh, I do know that I could act crazy and ungodly sometimes. Amen. And that could happen to any one of us. Amen. And I, are my glasses crooked or is that just me? I don't know. I think my glasses are crooked. <clears throat> He loved us even when we were spiritually dead and separated from him because of our sins. He made us spiritually alive together with Christ. Because um, being in Christ, to me, is a location. You're in Christ. You're in his kingdom. You're in God. Alive together with Christ, for by his grace, his undeserved favor and mercy, you have been saved from God's judgment. What do you save? Why are you always talking about your save, Sam? What do you save from? I'm saved from God's wrath. <laughs> and that's, trust me, that's the mercy of God. I couldn't do nothing to deserve the mercy of God. I don't think you could do anything to deserve the mercy of God. So when we mess up, when we sin, because a lot of people don't want to talk about sin anymore. They talk about mistakes or, you know, premarital sex. I slept with my boyfriend. It was a mistake. I slept with my girlfriend. It was a mistake. I'll leave that alone. I mean, when we mess up, when we sin, we know better than anyone how much we deserve to be punished. Sexual sin is different, though. People say sin is sin. Then why would God say the only sin that we should run from is sexual sin if it's the same as any other sin? Because every other sin is outside the body, the Bible says, but sexual sin is internal. Now we have a, a bigger problem, bigger issue. You know, for the young people that's listening, you think you could turn on sexual activity and turn it off at the drop of a dime. Or I made a mistake. I slept with my boyfriend. I slept with my girlfriend. Or I'll just stop doing it. Lord, have mercy on you. Lord, have mercy on me. I know through experience that to turn that off is not as easy as you think. I tried to turn it off when I first got saved, married and everything. And I was still addicted to a sexual activity that was in my life. How? If I was already saved, delivered. Because it's not as easy to turn that off as you may think. If you're delivered from sexual addiction, I'm delivered from sexual addiction. Praise the Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on you. If you're dealing with it, you're not alone, first and foremost. And if you, people always say, they always pin that on the men. Oh, men have... Addiction to pornography, sexual addictions, masturbation, all that stuff. Women go through that too. Women go through that too. I don't understand why it's always pinned on men. Amen. Women have emotions. Men have emotions, believe it or not. So if we don't deal with this and we think that we deserve God's mercy without dealing with our own responsibilities, then we're playing a game that we're never going to win first and foremost it's not going to be pleasing to the Lord because we're not acting out of faith. We'll be acting out on emotions and the will of our will, not God's will. We know better than anyone else how much we deserve to be punished when we sin. You even feel that conviction, right? Conviction is a good thing. People say, oh, that's guilt. Listen, if you feel guilty for doing something wrong, amen, the mercy of God is on your life because you're still alive. You're still alive in the spirit. As soon as you don't feel the conviction of God... So you don't feel the conviction of Holy Spirit anymore for the things that are, you're doing that are wrong, that are sinful, um, then you're in trouble. Big trouble. Amen? You're in trouble either way. Because when we commit a sin, we're disobeying God's you know, love and His mercy, His grace. Amen? And then we're finding ourselves under the law again. We put ourselves under the law. We're free from the law, and sometimes we put ourselves under the law. You know, A lot of religious people, um, those strict people that practice the law, they think they could get to God through the law. Amen. It's possible. But the law is set up to be our schoolmaster, not our master. Amen. It teaches us that we are sin sinners, right? That we were sinners. And how would you know what's bad if you don't know what's good? God's the only one who is good. So therefore, if you don't know God, you don't really know good. You're just going to know bad things and you're going to call bad good and good bad. I hope that doesn't interrupt what I'm saying here. But God, who knows us better than we know ourselves, 
right? You think you know, I know myself. I know what I'm capable of doing. I know what I did. I know my past. I just don't know my future. But I know who I'm hoping for for the future. Amen? I'm hoping for for the future. My mother's on here. Hi. God bless you, Ma. God bless you. It's good to see you on the Morning Devo. Amen. Amen. She writes all capitals. Hi, son. God bless. Amen. I am blessed. And thank you for um, letting God use you to bring me here to do what I'm doing now. You would have never thought, right? That uh, you birthed a son that was going to be saved. You never knew that. Amen. But God have mercy on your life. Mercy on my father's life. And mercy on my life. Amen. So thank you, mom. Bless you. I hope you're feeling well. So God knows us better than we know ourselves. And he's the one who could show us mercy. There's nothing I could do to gain God's mercy. It's all what God has done. So. I agree with people when they say we don't deserve God's mercy. I believe that. I don't deserve it. Amen. I can't go around saying, oh, I deserve this. Right? I deserve to be saved. I deserve to be in the kingdom of God. Why would I say that? Why would anyone say that? And if you think that you deserve it, quote me a scripture, let me know why. I'm not going to debate with nobody. I just want to know why you think you would deserve God's mercy and grace. Medallia, God bless you. Good morning. God bless you. Amen. Um, and better late than never, amen. If whatever you miss, you can rewind this um, tape, right? Remember the VHS? Or you could go to the podcast page and you can listen in. Thank you so much for coming by, Medallia. So, you and I don't, deserve, don't deserve God's mercy. A lot of people say it, and I agree. Because there's nothing that I've seen in Scripture that says, this person deserved this and this person deserved that. God accounted righteousness to Abraham. God said that um, Moses was the most humblest, I think, man. Um, And God used people and promoted people and called people who were trying to leave out of his will. God got them back like Noah and people like that. Um, Not Noah. um, The one who was being uh, one of the prophets that got swallowed up by the big fish. Amen. Amen. Can't remember the name right now. But amen. People like that that are trying to run from God, God will use you, right? Anyway, as long as you get a hold of your heart, then He has a hold of you and of me. Amen. Um, now it's going to bother me which one was the one that was running from God. But mercy isn't about you and what you have done. Listen to this it's about God and about. His love for you and what he has already done. The gospel message proves to me that God had mercy on me and had mercy on you and mercy on the whole world. Don't you realize and don't forget that Jesus could have climbed off that cross anytime. He could have called a legion of angels and wrapped it all up. It would have been a done deal. Benito would have been done. God could have called down the angels, got off the cross and be like, you know what? Forget you people. I came. Um, In the old covenant, I came in the new covenant, I came in the form of a man, I spoke, I did miracles, signs and wonders, and you still don't believe, and you're still saying that I'm a heretic, and you're still saying that I'm a liar, I'm done, God could have did that, and that would have not been a merciful God though, but he he is and he still is a merciful God, he was and still is a merciful God, if you're alive, listening and watching right now, that's the mercy of God. Tell me, why do you think you deserve God's mercy? Right? Why do we think we deserve God's mercy? It's a good question. That's the question I woke up this morning. I know I don't deserve His mercy, but He's merciful on me anyway. In the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Somebody let me know who was the the prophet that was running from God and then eventually got swallowed up um, by a big fish. Let me know because I'm completely forgetting the name. And that might be for a reason. Somebody might have to look them up to remind themselves that you can't run from God. God still has mercy and grace over you as well in Jesus' name. So I'm out of here. I'm out of time. But I thank you so much for hanging out with me for this morning, Devo. Hopefully we can do this again tomorrow. God bless you. God keep you. And remember always that God is good. Peace.